I think most Mario fans would agree with me when I say Mario has been a pretty consistent franchise throughout its lifespan. The amount of dry spells Mario has had have been very few in between. One of the more notable dry spells, I guess, that happened, I'd say, being the new Super Mario Bros. era during the time period where the Wii U was Nintendo's main console. From about 2012 to 2016, Mario games were definitely being released a lot, but the quality of the games themselves were very questionable in a lot of people's eyes. This time period was when the Paper Mario franchise began its major tone shift from a standard RPG to a more action-adventure style as well. The Mario Party games started using that weird car mechanic, and the platformer titles started to become a lot less innovative overall. Level designs, reused soundtracks, etc. The release of the Nintendo Switch in 2017 seemed to fix a lot of these issues people were having, though. Super Mario Odyssey was released in October of that same year, and has become one of the most popular Mario games of all time, being the sixth most sold Mario game of all time, and continuing to impact the YouTube viewing audience in a very creative way with all the mods people have made for the game, whether it be online hide-and-seek or the custom power-ups, I never would have guessed this game would have such an incredible shelf life to it. Hell, even Paper Mario fans started to warm up a bit to the new style. Uh, yeah, for many, it's still not the same as the original or Thousand Year Door, but I'm sure most can agree both Origami King and Color Splash had more soul put into them than Sticker Star did. For a while, Mario felt like it had been in one of its best states in years. Uh, but come 2021, and especially in 2022, the release of Mario games in general, spin-offs included, of course, started to slow down quite a bit. With 2021 only releasing three and a half new Mario games, I say three and a half because one of the games that was released was the Super Mario 3D World for Switch that contained Bowser's Fury. Uh, don't get me wrong, Bowser's Fury was great. It felt like a nice mix between Super Mario Galaxy and Odyssey's elements. But let's be real, it was essentially just 3D World DLC because you could meet the bare minimum count shine requirement for that game in less than three hours. So I can't in good conscience count Bowser's Fury as its own title or on equal footing with the likes of Odyssey. I, I just can't. The other three games being Mario Golf Super Rush, WarioWare Get It Together, and Mario Party Superstars. All of which could have been handled much better in my opinion. Mario Party Superstars to this day has not gotten any form of DLC, which honestly boggles my mind. Uh, considering the game is meant to be a Mario Party that banks off nostalgia, just add in more maps from the Mario Party 7 era and before. Maybe some more minigame selections too. I mean, the minigame selection was already pretty decent, but the fact that you only get to play on five maps still seems a little ridiculous. Ridiculous. I mean, hell, Mario Party 4 had nine different options to choose from on release, and that was during a time period before remakes for these games were even happening like that. It just seems like such a free way to get some extra money out of consumers like myself, but they just aren't doing it. 2022 being arguably worse, with only two new Mario games releasing for the entire year, both of which were spin-off titles, i.e. Mario Strikers Battle League and Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Mario Strikers Battle League felt like it did have quite a bit of hype leading up to its release once it was announced. People absolutely loved the previous two Mario Strikers games, and more notably Strikers Charged, which actually got pretty competitive between players thanks to the game utilizing the Wii's online mode. Now, Maybe I'm just not as tapped into the Mario Struggers community as some others are, but it feels like Battle League just wasn't talked about like that amongst Mario fans, which is weird because it did technically sell decently well as far as Mario sports titles go, already almost even in sales with its predecessor, Strikers Charged, in less than a year at market. And one thing I definitely noticed was how lacking the roster was for this game's initial release, only allowing 10 playable characters, and since the side players like Monty Mole, Dry Bones, and Shy Guys were not playable anymore, the variety in team building became a lot worse. Hell, even just the lineups for the captains alone was better, having 12 from the get-go, whereas Battle League had 10 from the get-go. Yeah, there's 16 now with all the updates it's gotten, but that's still less overall variety than Charged had. You'd think there'd be more the further into the future we got, but no. I hadn't gotten the chance to play Sparks of Hope yet, but I have heard mostly good things about it. From what I've personally seen, the consensus seems to be the game is about the same level of quality as the first one, with the first one selling over 10 million copies as of August 2022, which is insanely good for a third-party Mark title. So it makes sense to me as to why they'd want to make a sequel. But what I'm trying to wrap my head around is why the platformer titles from Mario have just been non-existent for the past five years, both 2D and 3D. I like spin-offs as much as the next guy, but the, with the exception of Mario Kart 8, a game that's continued to get well-rounded DLC over months at a time, the Mario platformers are what sell the most. So you'd think from a business perspective, they want to be releasing more than just two Mario games in a single year for more money. In case this wasn't clear enough, no other year in the history of Mario has had less games for the series than 2022 did. If we count the Game & Watch titles, even 
Even the year 1980 had more Mario representation than 2022. As for why 2022 was so dry for Mario, nobody really knows. Theories have been thrown around that they're trying to put more focus into the Mario movie until it actually releases before focusing on games again, which even if that is true, it could be a blessing and a curse at the same time. Since I'm a Mario shill, I'm definitely going to see that movie because the trailers are making it look genuinely good in my eyes. I, I love how Charlie Day sounds as Luigi especially. <laughs> However, it does seem like quite a bit of Mario fans are not pleased with Chris Pratt in particular being cast as Mario over the Mario voice veteran Charles Martinet, refusing to see the movie altogether over this alone. I mean, yeah, if someone dislikes how the literal main character of a movie sounds, then they probably aren't going to enjoy the movie as a whole. Realistically, though, I don't think it'll affect the movie's success that much. I bet there's going to be tons of kids who see this movie and have a blast, all the while not even knowing who Chris Pratt or Charles Martinet even are. And while I personally want to see this movie do well, I don't want it to turn into one of those instances where Nintendo takes a shift away from making good quality Mario games to focus on more movie sequels. I'm not a mind reader, but it does feel like Nintendo is fairly content with the state of Mario right now, being focused on Mario Kart 8 DLC and the movie, and that's just about it, which I find a bit unfortunate. The platformer titles are what got Mario so large in the first place to withstand the test of time over 30 years. To have now gone over five years without a proper Mario platformer just feels so strange. The fact that an Odyssey 2 or a new game with Odyssey's engine hasn't come out yet is genuinely surprising because there's no doubt it would sell well if that game was made. Hell, even just regular DLC for the first Odyssey that isn't just Luigi's Balloon World, making Delfino Plaza, a DLC kingdom, for example, would have been so free. Like, even if they made it cost 20 or more bucks, people would buy it. Simply make the Shine Sprites the moons for that kingdom the same way the Mushroom Kingdom moons were just power stars. I I, I just don't get it. it. It's essentially printing free money. How funny would it be, though, if we ended up getting a Nintendo Direct not too long after this video releases and it shows a new Mario platformer? I mean, I would love to be proven wrong. I really would. Maybe Nintendo is waiting for the movie to actually be released before going back to game-focused content regardless of the movie sales. I don't know. We could be cooking up crackpot theories about their decisions all day, but I just don't want 2023 to be a repeat of 2022 in terms of Mario. It, it really feels like we're overdue for something big at this point. I'm curious what you guys think, though. Are you totally fine with how Mario has been handled this past year and some change, or are there any ways you think it could have been handled better that I didn't already mention in this video? I would love to know your thoughts. Of course, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe with the notifications turned on for more Nintendo-related gaming content like this in the future. But for now, I will see you guys next time. Peace out, take care, bye-bye.